We've mentioned a few times in the series that Web APIs allow us to work with resources, but thus far, we haven't formally defined or modeled out what the resources would look like for our recipes API. We have to ask ourselves, well, what does a recipe look like? What types of properties would it have? And how would we pass that along in an HTTP message? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. And along the way, I want to introduce you to a language feature for C Sharp 9 that allow us to do that. And we call that records. Now, if you've ever written any C Sharp before, you should be familiar with classes. And one of the use cases for classes is to allow us to model real world things in our code. So classes can represent things like people or animals or even games. Now, classes can have properties and those properties can have values. When we talk about C Sharp 9 and records, well, records are almost exactly like classes, except that they add some additional benefits to them. We get support for things like immutability and equality. And we can also write a little bit less code whenever we're creating our records. If you take a look at the screen, you can see that I've started to define what a recipe record would look like. So I'll have things like the title or the descriptions or the ingredients. I even have a date time that represents when this actual record was created. Now, this isn't all there is to records, and I definitely recommend you head over to the docs to learn more about them. But for now, let's head over to Visual Studio and see how we can start working with records inside of our API. Just like you saw in that previous slide, I've gone ahead and created a recipes record, and I've added that to the models folder inside of our project. Now let's take a look at the recipes controller and see how we could use this new record. First, let's inspect the get operation. And you'll notice here that I'm no longer just returning an array of strings, but instead I'm returning an array of recipes. Also notice that I'm only filling out the title property, and I'm simply doing that because I wanted to keep the code sample small. But as you're building your own APIs, make sure you fill out as many properties as is necessary. Other than that, my action method is pretty much the same. I'm still receiving that query string parameter, and I'm still using that OK method to return an HTTP OK status. Now let's head down and check out the post operation. Inside of this operation, this is where we're going to create new recipes. So we're going to inspect the user or the client to send us some information that we could use. And well, that's probably going to come from the HTTP body. So notice that I'm using that from body binding attribute to associate that parameter to our action method. Once that's complete, we can either return a bad request if the operation failed, or we could return a HTTP 201 created, which means that everything was successful. Let's go ahead and try this out. With the Swagger UI up, let's take a look at the get operation first. I'll hit try out. I'll put a number here. I'll execute it. And then as you can see here, the data is returned to us in a JSON format, which is usually the default for our web APIs. But also notice that we're seeing all of those properties that are associated with our recipe record. Let's head over and check out the post operation. Now with the post operation, we're going to have to supply some information to our API. The good thing with this Swagger UI is that it fills out some of those properties for us. So all we have to do is change the values. I'm going to leave them as there is for now. Let's go ahead and execute this. And you can see at the bottom, I got a 201 status code. So now we've successfully created a recipe resource for our web API. But I want to move forward from these hard-coded values that we're returning from our responses. So in the next video, we're going to see how we can connect the data source to store and retrieve our information.